of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Heavenly Father, the fellowship, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. My brothers and sisters, the church is a living entity, transcending time and space, and so we are joined with the saints and they with us as we strive to live lives that witness to our faith. Lord Jesus, you are the delight of the saints. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Lamb of God who takes away our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the joy of every heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Revelation. I, John, saw another angel come up from the east, holding the seal of the living God. He cried out in a loud voice to the four angels who were given power to damage the land and the sea. Do not damage the land or the sea or the trees until we put the seal on the foreheads of the servants of our God. I heard the number of those who had been marked with the seal. 144,000 marked from every tribe of the children of Israel. After this, I had a vision of a great multitude, which no one could count, from every nation, race, 
people, and tongue. They stood before the throne and before the Lamb, wearing white robes and holding palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, Salvation comes from our God, who is seated on the throne, and from the Lamb. All the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They prostrated themselves before the throne, worshipped God, and exclaimed, Amen. Blessing and glory, wisdom and thanksgiving, honor, power, and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders spoke up and said to me, Who are these wearing white robes, and where did they come from? I said to them, My Lord, you are the one who knows. He said to me, These are the ones who have survived the great time of distress. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to the psalm is, Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, see what love the Father has bestowed on us, that we may be called the children of God. Yet so we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we shall be has not yet been revealed. We do know that when it is revealed, we shall be like Him, for we shall see him as he is. Everyone who has this hope, based on him, makes himself pure, as he is pure. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
be with you. And with your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain. And after he had sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth, the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you, and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. There's a famous scene in the life of St. Teresa of Lusseau, the little flower. When she was very young, she wondered whether the little or ordinary saints there in heaven were not eternally embarrassed by the presence of the greater saints. Her older sister used the opportunity to teach her about holiness using the example of two tumblers, one large, one small, each filled with water to the brim. Which is more full, she asked. The answer, of course, is neither is more full. Both were equally full, even though one has a greater capacity than the other. And in the same way, the saints in all their glory are full, filled with the very fullness of God, as St. Paul tells us, each sharing in his divine life according to his or her capacity. With that in mind, back when I was seven years old, the church gave me, and I'm sure most of you, the secret of the meaning of life. You may not have looked at it as, uh, as being such uh, when it was actually taking place, but most of us grew up in one way or another, listening and responding to the questions in the catechism. And the one that I often refer to even uh, even now, especially in masses of Christian burial, that one, why did God make you? That was the question that was there. And then, of course, the sister would answer so that we would know it, and then, of course, we had to memorize it, to know him, to love him, and to serve him in this world, and you know the rest of it, many of you, I see you nodding your heads, and to be happy with him forever in heaven or in the next world, depending on which translation. In other words, there is one meaning, one purpose to life, and that is to become a saint. Clearly God created us to be one with him forever in heaven. That comes out through the teachings of Jesus. My brothers and sisters, there is nothing more important than to realize this one fact. But it's almost as if we don't dare believe that this glory could possibly be offered to us. But that is why God created us. We fall into the error of thinking that the saints were born saints. We forget the incredible transformation that brought about in our own lives that sanctifying grace that changed us, changed our souls, and opened us to all of the graces and blessings that God would offer to us throughout our life here on earth. Making baptism probably 
the most precious gift ever given to us. Do you see, we are holy because God chose us and because God shares his life with us in baptism. That's where it started. You often hear me. I know Deacon John is going to nod his head on constant. Go to a baptism if you haven't been to one for a while. It's one of the most beautiful reminders of what we are all about and what brings us here day after day and week after week. The things that started there in baptism were to carry us throughout our lives until we stand before our loving God, bearing the fruits of our time here on earth. God nourishes us in that life, in our Holy Communion. That's what the Eucharist is all about. And offers us an eternal destiny of union with him forever. I love that example of St. Therese and her sister because it reminds me of my share in this drama of my own pilgrimage to God. We all have responsibilities that are given to us by virtue of us pledging ourselves to live in accordance with the teachings of Christ. My sisters and brothers, every significant decision that we make either deepens our capacity for union with God or lessens it makes us more generous, more loving, or less. They're the barometers that we should be using in measuring what it is that we do and making the decisions that we make. Do you see, as we live these graces, we have received our participation in the life of God deepens, just as when we refuse those graces, it diminishes. Remember Jesus' words, to him who has more will be given, while he who has not loses the little he has. I don't have to go very far, and we can all understand how that happens, because just look in our own families, look at the communities around us. My brothers and sisters, picturing our hearts opening to God, to God's love, to expanding their capacity for God with every generous decision can help us to understand how different saints can have different capacities for holiness. After all, don't we profess every Sunday, every big day that we come together that we believe in the communion of saints? Well, that doesn't simply mean those who are in heaven. It means all of us as well. Think for a moment what we've been taught that there are three parts to this holy Catholic Church. You remember them? The way they were described to me, the names have, may have changed by now. There is the church militant. That's us here on earth in the midst of our suffering and struggling. There is the church suffering, which is uh, also known as the church expectant. And that refers to the souls in purgatory. Then there is my favorite, the church triumphant which is those in heaven, the saints that have made it through this time of trial and are in heaven. And all of them form this mystical body of Christ. I don't think we hear that mentioned very much anymore, and that's a shame because it should be the pivotal reminder of why we do the things we do, why we gather on these special occasions, why we gather to receive that great gift that Christ continues to give to us his very body and blood, as we look back at how he gave his life for us in order that we might be, that we might become what it is that we were created to be. St. Peter himself tells us in his first letter that in the multitude of the saints, we are encompassed with a great cloud of witnesses, that they are the victors, that they have won the race, they have gained the crown of of uh, victory and now they stand and cheer us on during our journeys through life back to our loving God they cheer us in the midst of our struggles that they speed us on our way with their prayers and support and how we turn to them in prayer as well just as we might turn to each other to a good friend in a time of difficulty close friends and family there and ask for their support. We ask them as our elder brothers and sisters in the church to pray for us, to be there for us, to intercede for us. 
This morning I began with a story. Let me end with another one that I just remembered as I was putting this together. Once there was a little boy who visited a large cathedral that had many beautiful stained glass windows, kind of like what we have here. Of course, the sun's not shining out there, so we don't see them the way we usually do when the sun is shining through them. But they're there, and they're beautiful, and they catch your attention. Anyway, he was in church one day, and then he was known to say, Oh, now I see. Saints are the people that light shines through. I think that's a beautiful image of all the various saints that we have here. Of course, we have Jesus and Mary because this is uh, a church uh, under the patronage of Mary. But they're great reminders of those who have gone before us and of those who now await us to join them. That's the image I want you to take today. And you know, he was right on target when he made that ex exclamation. Saints are the people whose lives have touched, have touched ours in such a way that the light of God's love has shone through their lives to ours. My brothers and sisters, we really need to think about how or if God's love shines through us through our lives, to others, to those around us. that we may grow in holiness as we grow in faithfulness to the Beatitudes. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in positions of authority, that they may hunger and thirst for righteousness, working tirelessly to create a better future for all people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peacemakers and all who work to bring peace to families, communities, and the world, 
that they may see the fruit of their labor. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness may be kept safe in the tender embrace of God's arms. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the sick and for those who bring care to them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially to, for those whose names we have placed on the altar, and for those whose names are inscribed on our memorial scrolls, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people of the parish for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the legal protection of the unborn in all life, from conception to natural death, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all the prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts. And for all our intentions spoken and unspoken, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, we mourn and you comfort us. We show mercy and you forgive us. We make peace and you call us your own. Bless us in all that we do as you grant the prayers we make according to the teachings of your beloved Son, through whom we make these prayers. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen.
pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May these offerings we bring in honor of all the saints be pleasing to you, O Lord, and grant that, just as we believe the saints to be already assured of immortality, so we may experience their concern for our salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For today, by your gift, we celebrate the festival of your city, the heavenly Jerusalem, our mother, where the great array of our brothers and sisters already gives you eternal praise. Towards her, we eagerly hasten as pilgrims advancing by faith, rejoicing in the glory bestowed upon those exalted members of the church, through whom you give us in, your, in our frailty both strength and good example. And so we glorify you with the multitude of saints and angels, as with one voice of praise we acclaim. rightly gives you praise for through your son our lord jesus christ by the power and working of the holy spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore O lord we humbly implore you by the same spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. <clears throat> for on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing. <clears throat> and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. I am your death, O oh Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Until you come again. 
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, <clears throat> grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Dennis, our Bishop, and Joseph, our coadjutor, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, a merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. My sisters and brothers, at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. <clears throat> deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that, by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit, let us offer each other a sign of peace.
My brothers and sisters, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but one will say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Amen. The blood of Christ. Amen.
Let us pray. As we adore you, O God, who alone are holy and wonderful in all your saints, we implore your grace so that coming to perfect holiness in the fullness of your love, we may pass from this pilgrim table to the banquet of our heavenly homeland. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you. <laughs> Bow down for the blessing. May God, who through the childbearing of the Blessed Virgin Mary, will in his great kindness to redeem the human race, be pleased to enrich you with his blessing. Amen. Amen. May you know always and everywhere the protection of her through whom you have been found worthy to receive the altar of life. Amen. Amen. May you who have devoutly gathered on this day carry away with you the gifts of spiritual joys and heavenly rewards. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Amen. Together let's pray the prayer to St. Michael. St. Michael, the Archangel, you defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. 